everybody and welcome to this new post Kickstarter update. Before we get started, a few words about the Plash Management software project that we've undertaken at Larian. So David tells me that it's going to be not months, which basically means that it's going to take a couple of weeks before it's going to be ready. And so expect something from us in the next couple of weeks. Couple can mean two weeks, three, maybe even four weeks. Anyway, uh, to get started today, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Osiris, which is our scripting language. And uh, who better than to explain you Osiris than Bert Stevens here. Uh, he is uh, a script, uh, a script what? A script dude, I guess, a script guru, something guru, like that. Yeah. Script guru, exactly, Bert the guru. And he's been working with us for quite some time. Uh, he did a lot of the scripting on uh, Ego Draconis and Dragonite Saga, but also on a whole bunch of other games in which we actually used uh, Osiris. So Bert is going to explain you about generic behaviors, about how you script and the Divinity toolset and he's also going to be the man who's going to be introducing actually the framework with which we're going to do the NPC schedules uh, because now we have to do them because we reached that last stretch goal. It's all yours Bert. Hey, we're going to talk a bit about Osiris today. That's the scripting language we use here at Larian Studios and that we've been using since Divine Divinity, so we know it very well. It's what we use to script uh, NPC reactions to the player actions. So that can be simple things like walking into a trigger and starting a dialogue, or it can be more complex, and that's what we call the generic behaviors, and we'll show you some examples of that. So as a first example, let's take a look at Esmeralda here. That's a shopkeeper in our game. You can see her wares here on her counter. So when we uh, when you try to move an item, she's gonna react to that. And that's all done through the through the generic behaviors scripted in Osiris. So she's telling us not to move her stuff. So I'll say I'm sorry. When we try to steal something, she's also gonna react to that. And we're not interested, so we'll say no, thank you. Leave her alone for now. So here we are at the market, and when we try to steal something here, we're going to get a different reaction from the generic behaviors. So in this case, the guy, the owner of the cheese, is going to call the guards. Here they are. And they'll, they'll ask us if you want to return this or not. Um, let's, let's return it. So in this case, the behavior was different because the generic behavior checks a couple of stats and facts before it decides what to do. So for the shopkeepers, they'll, they'll ask you if you're interested in buying the item. For other people, like in this case, um, they'll call the guards if they can. So the generic behavior is going to check a couple things to decide what's supposed to happen. Uh, the most important thing is the sight range of the character. Because if they can't see you, then they won't react to it, obviously. But the next thing is gonna, it's going to check like uh, how much the NPC actually likes you. If he really likes you, he's going to react more moderately than when he really hates you. Uh, the next thing that's important is who actually owns the item. If uh, the item belongs to the NPC that saw you, he's going to be really angry because it's his property. And then of course there's a value. If it's a really cheap item, then he won't care as much as if it's a really expensive item. And all that, uh, what NPCs consider cheap or expensive, is all defined in Osiris, so it can be changed by mothers. So when the NPC decides that he cares enough to uh, do something about you stealing the item, he's gonna check it to see if he can call in the guards to help him out. So the guards, they're gonna show up, and then they're gonna ask you if you want to return the item or not. And they'll uh, probably ask for a fee as well if it's not your first time stealing something. And the value of the fee uh, depends on the value of the item actually. It's gonna be more than what the item's worth. If you can't pay or you don't want to pay, then you'll have to either go to prison or fight the guards. So all those generic behaviors are defined in story, so you're free to modify them or add completely new ones if you want to. Like say for example you have the player walking around with a unique item and you want NPCs to react to that. Maybe come up to the player and trade him for it, then you can do that. Um, of course, adding a generic behavior, it's, it's not the easiest thing, so you'll have to keep a lot of things in mind, so it'll, it'll take some work to get it right. So there you have it. And there you have it indeed, Bert Stevens explaining in his unique style 
how to do generic behaviors in OSIRIS. Uh, we're going to have a very big review meeting at Larian Studios next week, Monday or Tuesday, and so expect in our next update a couple of images and moving pictures from what happened there. Nobody knows, but uh, I look forward to it. Cheers. Bonjour, bonjour, comment ça va? Je suis en train de nettoyer la table. Euh, regarde, alors ça, ça faut, faut le jeter. Ça s'est cassé dans la poubelle. Ça s'est cassé dans la poubelle. Euh...